Let us start off with Crosby's biography. Philip Crosby was born on June 18, 1926 and died at the age of 75 in August 18, 2001. Crosby was born in Wheeling, West Virginia with his family, David Crosby, his brother, and his parents, Mary and Dr. Edward Crosby, who was a podiatrist, a medical specialist who helped with issues regarding the feet or lower legs. Moving on to his education and career. Philip Crosby was a graduate of Triadelphia High in 1944. He also served in the Navy both times during World War II, where he was a hospital corpsman and in the Korean War as a Marine Medical Corpsman. In between serving in the Navy, he graduated from Ohio College of Pediatric Medicine and went on to work as a pediatrist with his father. However, Crosby realized that pediatrics was not his preferred field. In between serving in the Navy, he graduated from Ohio. Thus, in 1952, he started working in corporations and got a job as a junior electronic test technician for Crossley Corporation. Thus, in 1952, he started working in corporations. After this, he was recruited to work with the American Society for Control, where he began to form his own philosophies regarding quality. After this, he was recruited to work with the American Society for Control. He went on to work as a reliability technician for Bendix Corporation in South Bend, Indiana. This was where he realized that he should become an executive and took a job offering from Martin Marietta Company where he established the Zero Defects Concepts. In 1965, Crosby became the Vice President in Charge of Corporate Quality for International Telephone and Telegraph, or IT&T, where he implemented his pragmatic management philosophies. Philip Crosby also founded organizations such as the Philip Crosby Associates Incorporated, Career 4 Incorporated, and Philip Crosby Associates II. Crosby's first of 13 published books was entitled Quality is Free, where he summarized his approach to quality in 14 steps. Quality is defined by Crosby as something that can be quantified and used to improve the bottom line. The Zero Defects approach focuses on preventing bad quality products and puts responsibility on management. His philosophy focuses on getting rid of defects in the process and setting standards to eliminate said defects. These are the 14 steps of Zero Defects laid out by Crosby. Okay, so here are Crosby's 14 steps to quality improvement. For the first, we have management commitment, second, quality improvement team, third, quality measurement, fourth, cost of quality evaluation, fifth, quality awareness, sixth, corrective action, seventh, establish an ad hoc committee for the zero defects program. Number 8, we have Supervisor Training. Number 9, we have Zero Defects Day. Number 10, Gold Setting. Number 11, Error Cost Removal. Number 12, Reformation. Number 13, Quality Councils. And number 14, Do It Over Again. Let us now have the quality practices impacted by the contribution of Philip Crosby. Crosby is the only American quality expert without a doctorate. He is responsible for the Zero Defects program, which emphasizes doing it right the first time. Crosby's principle, doing it right the first time, was his answer to the quality crisis. He defined quality as full and perfect conformance to the customer's requirements. The essence of his philosophy is expressed in what he called the absolutes of quality management and the basic elements of improvement. Crosby's thinking was consistently characterized by four absolutes. First, the definition of quality is conformance to requirements. Second, the system of quality is prevention. Third, the performance standard is zero defects. According to Crosby, zero defects was not just a manufacturing principle, but was an all-pervading philosophy that ought to influence every decision that we make. Managerial notions of defects being 
unacceptable and everyone doing things right the first time are reinforced. And fourth, the measurement of quality is the price of non-conformance. A quality quote by Phil Crosby is that quality is free. It's not a gift, but it's free. The unquality things are what cost money. In Crosby's zero defects philosophy, it does not mean that there is never any mistakes. However, it simply tells organizations not to start off with expecting that there will be errors. Rather, work should begin by clearly defining the requirements. Additionally, Crosby says that when organizations accept operations to have errors, and that it has to be redone, it can impact their revenue negatively. being that quality improvement is a continuous process, meaning there is never an end of this, it's a continuous routine. Okay. For me, Philip Crosby's zero defects policy can also be applied in real life. It will be challenging, but the results don't lie. Finding the cause of defects, or in other words, making mistakes, is the first step in correcting future mistakes instead of um, not minding and making more mistakes. Quality measurement, recognition, goal setting, commitment, and improvement are steps that I find very relatable in quality management. My key takeaway on learning about Philip Crosby's theories on quality is that if something is done right the first time, it is done perfectly every time, and no time and money is wasted. Correcting errors caused by doing it too fast or without controlling quality. Quality of conformance is the ability of a product, service, or process to meet its design specifications. Design specifications are on interpretation of what the customer needs. Acceptable quality or defect levels and traditional quality control measures represent evidence of failure rather than assurance of success. He believes that the prime responsibility for poor quality lies with management and that management sets the tone for the quality initiative from the top. My key takeaway from this lesson is that for Crosby, prevention is more important than inspection and cure. The goal is to meet requirements on time, the first time, and every time. He believes that management, which sets the tone for the quality initiative from the top, bears the primary responsibility for poor quality.